Roy. They're on their way back. They'll be here on Wednesday. That's what their plan is. Continue to pray for Mom. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if she gets better, then she'll be on the earth for a while. If not, she'll be in a better place. So just pray for my mother. Um, you know, a couple other people are busy doing some other things. Eleanor, you have something to share with us. Eleanor was drawing while we were in worship. and uh, what, uh, what's, what's going on there? I saw someone running in a blue wind. They were cutting the atmosphere around them, and they were bringing something else, something new. So, so yeah. someone was, uh, evidently, the atmosphere around them wasn't very good? No, but they were, they became a thermostat instead of a thermometer, and they were running through this, like, thick, purpley, blobby stuff, and then mm -hmm. they started to change the atmosphere around them, and they started to change everything really much. Okay. Does anybody have that uh, sense sometimes that you're just, what, what was, they were just kind of, it was binding them or something, or it was hindering them? And, but, they all, but they were cutting, cutting away the bondages and the things that were hindering them, whatever that is. Yep. And they were going towards freedom. Yep. Okay. Because it still looks rather dark there, but it is a little lighter over here. Okay. I, I get that way in the morning before I've had my coffee. <laughs> you can relate to that. <laughs> kind of slush. Oh <laughs> got that slush feel. Okay, well that, thank you, Eleanor. That goes right along with what we're talking about, a breakthrough. So what does a breakthrough look like? Um, An act or an instant of removing, a, uh, removing or, uh, or surpassing an obstruction or a restriction, a breakthrough. And that's what Eleanor is describing here, is this person is experiencing some breakthrough. And you know, we want this, we want the breakthrough all of a sudden just to happen immediately. And that does it in the way it works, does it? We just don't have, as we've talked about, the drive-through breakthrough. Okay. <laughs> oh, it over there. So there, I mean, God is wanting to give us a breakthrough. How many need a breakthrough? How many need a breakthrough? How many, want, you know, how many need a breakthrough? Some sort. Nobody need a break. Nobody needs breakthroughs. Okay, if you need a breakthrough, let's stand. Let's pray. If you uh, and it's a removing or surpassing an obstruction or restriction, you're overcoming a stalemate. Need a breakthrough? Okay, let's uh, just hold hands. Let's hold hands to someone that next to you. And let's just start praying. God is the God of the breakthrough. Now, whatever this area of breakthrough, you need a breakthrough, we're standing for breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, would just, Lord, as that we were singing that last song, call upon the name of the Lord and we'll be saved. Saved means a breakthrough. Save means deliverance. Save means healing. And we call upon your name, Lord. Would you make the words of my mouth words that will bring healing and hope to people in this room today? And Lord, would you speak to your people? Speak to me and speak through me. I know Megan's got a back issue and I just speak to that back. And Lord, would you just release the tightness there and the pain there. And that Lord, with her movement, she would... It would be... It would, I'm not sure what the lesson is in here. There's some lesson. You allowed it to happen. And Lord, in her movement, she would have joy. Every time she moves, it would remind her, you're a real God, and you really love me. And you're personal. It's got to be distressing for her. She's out of work, and she's not working. And she's not, some money's not coming in. 
Lord, there's different, like Mike. Mike says he just feels physically sluggish in the morning. When he gets up, maybe there's a mental sluggish. I don't know what's going on with Mike. You understand, Mike. You don't understand. I'm talking to this Mike here, but maybe I don't know what's going on with the Mike in the back here. But Father, you know, you know what's going on. And he would just love to have a breakthrough. And Lord, but with this extra energy, he would have more to serve you. Let me know what his, let him know what his purpose is. I know Robbie's wanting to break through. She's wanting to break out of here and do something, but she's not even, it's it's not it's not clear. It's like that person in the picture. It's, she knows there's things, but encourage her. I just want to thank you for Jeff. And some of us, it's not a it's Lord, we just I don't know what the thing is. Heard it said that sometimes some people's trash is another person's treasure. You know, what does that have to do with this? Because some people's blessing is another person's curse. Lord, you know, you know some of us need a little more adversity because we're too, because things are going too well and we're getting complacent. And some of us have too much adversity. We need. So I'm going to pray that the prayer, Lord, afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. You understand what that means. Lord, I just want to thank you. Anybody, anybody uh, want to add to this prayer? I want like the removing or surpassing or destruction or restriction. <laughs> Lord, we want to get surpassed. We want to get beyond. So thank you, Lord. You're the God of the breakthrough. Yeah. And in advance, we thank you. I'll experience a breakthrough when it's good to be clear about it. In your prayer life, some of the worst kind of prayers that I think are just bless the missionaries. Okay. I have no idea what that means. Or bless them. Or if you need a car, ask for a car. If you need a new job, ask for a new job. If, get specific on your prayer and what a breakthrough would really mean. What does a breakthrough really mean? Or else we become generalized. I'm running sure when prayers are answered. We talked about some things, the ingredients that lead to a breakthrough, just like the different ingredients that we would put together for a cake. There's all sorts of different ingredients. Like for a cake, what do we need, Kathy, for a good cake? For a good cake. For a good cake, what do you put in? Cake mix. <laughs> cake mix. Is that what you, is that what you guys do here? Yeah. You just have big cake mix and you put it in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, what else is in the cake mix? Sugar. Yeah, sugar and eggs. You got sugar and eggs. And, I mean, you got all the rest. Yeah. If you want to break through, it'll take humility. Pride leaves before a fall. I think we understand that. It'll take perseverance. Obviously, if you give up, you're never going to be able to get your breakthrough. Develop and sustain a close relationship with God today and act in passion for God. We're looking at passion. What Christian passion is. Wesley Duell says, all other passions build upon a flow from your passion for Jesus. A passion for souls grows out of a passion for Christ. A passion for mission builds upon a passion for Christ. The most crucial danger to a Christian, whatever his role, is to lack a passion for Christ. The most direct route to a personal renewal and new effectiveness is a new, all-consuming passion for Jesus. Lord, give us this passion, whatever the cost. A passion for Jesus is at the, is the forefront of living a life for Christ. Passion and intense energy, this is my definition, enthusiasm and love for God that leads to a life lived for God. Wesley said, he equated enthusiasm with passion. Enthusiasm. If you break enthusiasm, do Theo, Theo, that's God in, God in you is going to give you excitement. 
some years ago I heard that from Robert Schuller. Enthusiasm. The root of that word is God in you. People that have God inside of them rolling around and is victorious inside of them, that's the people that have enthusiasm. And the opposite of passion is apathy. apathy. How does apathy so show itself? Sort of an I, I, I don't care attitude. Selfishness. Selfishness. That's how apathy comes out. How else does apathy? Isolation. <laughs> yeah, if you get into isolation, just get into yourself. Just doing your own thing. Apathy. You're just not drawn towards towards God or the things of God. It's little by little. It's not one big old. We'll talk about this a little, a little deeper here. When you look up passion in the dictionary, what will you find? Every dictionary it will come out. It'll talk about. It'll talk about Jesus. There was a movie some years ago called Passion of Christ. Passion of Christ. What does that mean? Passion in that sense means what? Suffering. Now, do you equate passion with suffering? I tell you what, if you can suffer for it, you have passion in it. If you can't suffer for it, you really don't have passion. If you can suffer for God, you have passion for God. How do you define love? 1 Corinthians 13, love suffers, suffers long and is kind. A true love for God means you will suffer for God. In Acts, after the disciples, those early disciples were beaten and flogged. It says they came out of there with joy, considering it a privilege to suffer shame for their name, for the name of Jesus. They considered it a privilege to suffer shame. You know, the real test is when everything's dried up and God doesn't seem like He's around anymore. What do you do then? That's the real test. Because all that was removed is the stuff. Someone the other week asked me, how are things? How would you answer that? Thingy. <laughs> how, how are things? What thing? It, it, it didn't strike me very well. They would have asked me how mother is. I could talk to her about my mom. They asked me about how I am. I don't consider myself or my mother or my wife or my kids things. How are things? And I began to think about it. I don't really know. I don't know if I care about things that much. I don't know. How are things? You look up passion in the dictionary, you'll find it'll talk about the passion of Christ. Suffer. That's when people usually go south. When things get a little tough, that's when we pull out. I mean, so many people would go down the aisle here in the United States and get married, right? Half of the marriages end up in divorce court. Why? Why? Can't work it out. Not willing to suffer it through and work it out. Now, some things probably aren't worth working out. What I mean by that, if someone's getting beat, work it out, keep getting beat. I don't think that's going to work. Does the Bible talk about passion? 